Hi, welcome back to The Basement. I'm Steve Lewis. Today I've got something a little bit different for you. My first ever guest on the show, and boy am I starting off with a good one. On August 7th, 2022, it was my pleasure to speak to multi-talented, fascinating, and extremely inspirational artist, Stephen Kalinich. Of course, we talked about him recently in relationship to his collaborations with Dennis Wilson on Friends, Little Bird and Be Still. He also co-wrote All I Want to Do with Dennis, Rainbow, some others. With Brian, he co-wrote Child of Winter, uh, California Feeling, A Friend Like You, some others there as well. His 1969 album, released in 2008, A World of Peace Must Come, was created in collaboration with Brian. Many, many Beach Boys connection and just a fascinating person all around. And just before we get started, I want to thank Stephen Kalinich's friend Martin Steele for doing the virtual introductions that made this conversation possible. Thank you very, very much, Martin. And of course, I want to thank Stephen Kalinich for taking the time and trouble to talk to me. So here we go, presenting Stephen Kalinich. If for anybody that watches my YouTube channel, I don't think Steve Kalinich really needs any introduction, but obviously you're a poet, a lyricist, a performer, a songwriter, a visual artist, and much more. And I am really delighted and honored to be speaking to you. And it's great. And I apologize for the light coming in because I don't have my shade today that could block it. I usually do. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. I, I can see you. And behind me are some of my paintings and stuff. Oh, beautiful. Great. Oh, that's very cool. There's many, many things I'd love to talk about. I did want to, if we, if I could just dive in, I did want to yeah, ask, dive in. Well, I did want to ask you about uh, leaves of grass. Just kind of started what I think is sort of the beginning. Not where you want. You know, it was a bonus track on the uh, World of Peace Must Come, and I see there that it says it was recorded in '65 or '66. Was that ever released anywhere? I mean, was it commercially available? Yeah, that was the first time as the bonus track. That was the first time Studio B Capital, but there was a version recorded that is updated, but it never made it to record. That's the original Primal from Ascot recording, maybe 63. Oh, that early? Yeah. Wow. When, when did you come to LA? Around that period, 64, 65, 60. Oh, okay. Like so you said there are two versions of Leaves of Grass. There's more. There's one on the that one. That is not the one, Carl. That was the demo. It's the one that made it to that record, not the Carl version. Okay. I don't know if the Carl version will ever be released. Oh, okay. I don't even okay. know. Because I keep, I still I keep have hearing it. that Carl produced it, and you know. Yeah, he was the producer, but not on this version. But he was the producer. But this version I did on my own uh, with the engineer at Ascot. It cost me fifteen dollars. Oh yeah. Paper. Uh, not, it wasn't called a vinyl, it was called a acetate. It was the one with Carl part of a larger project? Well, originally it was part of a project with me and Mark Buckingham, but it didn't make it. But after we did it, it became a bonus track because I saved it in that form. And it became a bonus track from Light in the Attic. I just happened to have it on a CD. I might have had it on a cassette and transferred it to CD. I'm sorry to break in here, but at this point, we took a little bit of a break. For one thing, I wanted to check to make sure that I didn't have some kind of a technical snafu. I had a nightmare of getting all the way to the end and finding out that the conversation hadn't been recorded. Thankfully, everything was working fine, so we resumed. The version that Carl produced, let me get, was that part of an album, a proposed album? It was a part of a proposed album that never got released, but- Okay, he, and that would have been for Brother Records? Yes. Okay, got it. Got and, it. Okay. and Carl approved of this one, and he might have had something to do, but it was really from my original demo that I did alone. Okay, got it. That was okay. like, like just like, I'll give you an example. Something like, well, it's here, is it a 60 year? Something like I went in the studio, I had, I don't know, did I have a guitar? I don't remember if I had a guitar in that. I might have played a little, but it was like, Leaves of grass, paint them green. Look through them to things unseen. They make the flower grow to the sky. They make the little baby cry. Watch them 
touch the ground as the leaves fall down. And Mark Buckingham played a 12 string guitar. And it was, the, you hear that guitar thing behind it? Yeah. That is the same one that Carl used in his recording, but I never got the full mix of Carl's recording. Oh, okay. So did pa Carl also played on the version that he produced? No, that was Mark playing that okay. guitar. Okay, got it, got it, okay. Uh, I knew it was Mark on the demo. Added, unless Carl added to it when I wasn't there, I don't remember that. But you know, we're dealing 50 some years ago. Sure, sure. I was, find so, out more, was, an so album I was an album completed or how far did you get? No, uh, we were just gonna do our own album, but it wasn't Leaves of Grass. That was a, that was a later album. It was gonna be just Mark Lindsay Buckingham and Steve Kalinich, and that was going to be the album, but that was one of the cuts. And the album may have been called Leaves of Grass instead of World of Peace Must Come if it came out that way. And I had a lot of poems on it. I had a song like Lonely Man, which was also made into the brine, which I love. Mm. You know that song, Lonely Man? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, and that I, I did a cappella. That was like, you know, like that kind of almost Hebrew. Let me tell you all. A lonely man who lived many. I still have kind of the same voice. And then Brian sang that high part, which I think is incredible. You know that high part over it? Right. Yeah. I yeah. I love it. It sounds like the Middle Ages to me. I yeah. got so chilled. And also the, the content of that song, he searched in Canada, in Spain, and in Italy. He searched around Gibraltar and near the Red Sea. And the love was there, was everywhere, but the love he did not see. And and then we go up the high, and then Brian has that high voice. Right. That gives me chills. I still, yeah. I think that was like Middle Ages music. I I know it wasn't maybe that commercial, but it doesn't that record, like, isn't that a good? Oh, yeah. Oh, I love, love that it record. It was like yeah. the, the Middle Ages or something, or the, and I, I like that I, I was on tune in those days. And uh, <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because speaking to you, I hear the same voice that I hear on a world of peace must come. I think your voice is remarkably unchanged. You think so? I do well, very much. I like that part. And the heavens they did open, and his eyes lit up with glee. And there's no longer any lonely man around. And then Brian goes way, way up there. Yeah. I just think that's some magic singing that Brian never did even on any other Beach Boy record. Yeah, I just yeah, think yeah. it's an underrated. I I like that as much as Little Bird. That and Brian, and also he did the same on California Feeling, his original demo. And the new one is fantastic too, that Alan Boyd and Mark Lynette mix. There's a new release of the mix on A Friend Like You. I sent you the other day. Just got released a couple of days ago. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I heard it. And they put more of Paul's voice in it. Yeah, I love that new mix. That it's very yeah, cool. yeah. Paul, and Paul's in there more. And also, there's a video. And the thing I like about it, they use mostly unknown people. There's Paul and Brian and me and maybe Mark at the end, little second. I yeah. like the fact because I did not write it for Paul McCartney. I know there's a lot of controversy. I wrote it for it could be God, it could be mm -hmm. you, it could be any friend. That friendship, how valuable it is. A few people put that song down. And Brian just laughed because he said people are like that. But they thought I was doing a kiss ass to McCartney, but I didn't write it to McCartney. Well, we got him later. You know something? I think the liner notes on this album did a real disservice in that regard because the liner notes indicate that it was written specifically for that must McCartney. Be, yeah, that's not the truth. But what I did tell Brian, I just said, you can dedicate it to him. You can dedicate it to him. You're, but I didn't write it for him. Yeah, I wish I did. I'd like to say that, but I wrote it. But I'm honored that he did it. But I, sure. I would, why would I want to tell a mistruth about that? It's not. It was innocent on Brian's part. I took it as something somebody put in there for promotion, trying to be helpful, and it just gave the wrong impression. What I'm amazed at that when everyone was making these things about the psychedelic and about all that stuff, that in the middle of this, that Brian Wilson in his 20s, early, me too, late teens, early 20s, we started that up together. And we've been friends all these years, but that he would take his initiative, a risk when he was doing all that commercial with someone. I think that's a bigger story, 
not for me, but in the world, because at that time, Vietnam, all the things that were happening, it's like a mini story and the world was going around. And I think that could be an interesting, I'd love to do a movie on it sometime. Not just my record, but those times, the peace mongers, the world of peace. And I think, and also, which you might not know, I was scheduled to go on that Maharishi tour and the, the office, John Parks was, they were getting ready to buy me clothes and get everything. But I think a week or so before the promoters were worried about spoken word. So they pulled me out, but it made it save my life because that was a bomb tour. But you know, I, and, having heard that you were going to open with spoken word and then they were going to have the Maharishi and then a Beach Boy concert as uncommercial as it might be, I admire the fact that they were looking to yeah, expand what the so. rock experience could be. I think the historical notice of it, and you saw later in England, I developed the Galactic Symphonies. I think something beautiful could have emerged with Brian too. Although Richard Dern in England and my backers, we did some amazing stuff. And recently I did another album, Spoken Word with Adam Marsland, who I think is a wonderful talent too. And I, I painted the art cover on that one. And and I think he arranged it around or something. I don't know. But I am very excited. And uh, this week, Thursday, Todd Lawrence is going to do another Nilsson tribute in LA. And uh, this time I'm going to do one of the poems of the Galactic, but with no music. Everyone offers to play, but I want to do one with no music so you can just hear the words. Yeah, well, I, I meant to ask you about the Helen Keller poem, which Dennis had, uh, you know, wanted to set music to, and you said that he never got, you know, never created. He might have started a little bit. Yeah, he loved that. That really touched him. So with the Helen Keller poem, you put me onto Stacy Keach's recitation of it. Yeah. Which is yeah. great, and I really enjoyed it. But I, it struck me, you also sent me the, the text of it. And for yeah. me, on that particular poem, I was more moved by reading it. And I wanted to ask you, do you always, uh, is your poetry always written to be spoken? I consider myself more of a spoken word artist. Whether I'm a poet or not, people say they call me the poet, I the poet, and I did write them. But whether I'm actually a poet or I'm just a person that deals with concept words, they're coming from a certain place my beliefs have unfolded even more clearly now i used to think that immediate peace brian and i were going to create and now i realize it's all in consciousness it's not out there it's in the sky and my view instead of god is above or is, is it part of our own fabric of how consciousness is before even life as we know it evolved the stillness is the most active place in the universe the mill the music is less active than the stillness because that great bed of the stillness is the whatever it is would know that the music rises but there's a stillness music like listen in the stillness can be heard a word yet not a word of god of life and love it's from one of my other poems the reason i like to spoke speak to helen i know a lot of people did it on the opera guy did it stacy but when i did it this is what Dennis liked, because I, I told him like this. She touched me in stillness. No sounds could she see. No stars could she see. No sounds could she hear. Yet she smiled as she walked, as if something within gave her eyes, gave her ears, gave her hope. And I who could see the morning sunrise and feel the ripples in the gentle stream did not see in life as much as she did hear the many silent voices so uh, my idea was as a pop overture like i'm just visual i'm making this up now like i wanted dennis like we did in be still which was another from the bible i'll tell you about that later if you want to know sure um and these change and they'll keep evolving because i remember more things as i get older but it was like, she touched me in stillness. No sounds could she hear, no stars could she see, but she smiled as she walked, as if something within gave her eyes, gave her ears, gave her hope. You know, that was intense. So you could read it, 
And if you get it reading, it's fine. It's if you get the reading. But it between the words is the intent and the what I'm trying to say in a lot of my words, and I realize where we all fall short as artists, it's not enough to write them. And I fall short as much as anyone, maybe you do, I don't know. I don't know your life, but to try and live, to try and live little bird or be still, not just have a hit record or hmm. just, that's a cool record or they did a doobie when they did. First of all, you don't, if you want to do the grass, do it, but you don't need that to do it. That is running through that underneath stillness, the music that evolves from and goes back to. And nothing that will can dissolve what we're, what is real is what cannot dissolve, I believe. This, so live in the now. That's my, what it's come mm -hmm. down to. And I think Dennis, even though despite, they tried, the press tried to do all these things, Mats and all those other things when I was around. But I try to find what is the calm, what is the thread, and what's going on in the world. Now, all of the illnesses, the virus is a good example, all the chaotic stuff, it all will not be and the stillness will be there after yeah. before and maybe that's what our essence in this world is living in the now but in the the sense that maybe we are don't we maybe we don't die and we're not born maybe we're something else to me it makes sense but it took me all these years to have a living philosophy of it it seems though that you had that stillness practice quite early. Believe it or not, I evolved from a five or six year old to 12 or 13 year old juvenile delinquent that became a stillness, but I created my own. I didn't, when I learned about the practice of later, I actually thought I created them. Weekly Unity published, I think the first poem of mine they published, I wrote in 69, but somehow it said it came out in 70 again. Hmm. God is alive. And okay. there's a poster of it. But it was, and then they did God is Alive in 1970, but it was the same poem. They said, that's too commercial. So I did these scrolls. You know, I wanted to be like a renaissance, but I wanted to learn, like, to help the poor people, hungry people, like that, not to be a saint or anything, but I just thought that is the natural. But yet there's something in humans. There's that animal part that wants to destroy or wants to be the Pac-Man that gobbles everything. Right. And then there's the wanting to get together. And I read in biology and a lot of uh, scientists that there are times when the body's developing and the soul, when cells cooperate. And then when they get to their own state, they don't anymore. Mm. They start warring. One wants to be better than another. I want to be better than you. I want to be famous. I want to be known as a person. It's not enough for them. But it should be enough that we just have this life is a gift. And that's the thing I think that's the key thing that I wanted to say. Now, have I done a lot of things wrong? Sure. Have I been an asshole many times? Yes. Aren't we all? Uh, yeah, and, aren't we all. But I like your little record, how you have it all. Oh, so thanks. <laughs> I need you to come over here and organize mine. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, this is my backdrop for my YouTube video. I hope you enjoyed that. There's much more to come. Please tune in next week for part two. Meanwhile, love to see your comments on this. Please hit like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.